Chapter 3, Vassal Urban Warfare. And welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Valkyria Chronicles, people. I just couldn't resist the chance to cut away at the end of that uh, cutscene. Unfortunately for me, that makes it a bit more annoying to do a cut, so I'm going to quickly save it and be right back. Alright guys, we are back from saving, and we are just going to continue to jump right in to Vassal Urban Warfare Summons. Hope you guys enjoyed the last episode. It was really fun to play this game again. Especially the <laughs> kid giving, the lady giving birth and <laughs> father stank. It was amazing. In March of 1935, the Empire began its invasion across Gallia's eastern border. Maximilian, commander of the Gallian invasion front, built his army around mobile armor. Girlendio and the other fortresses along the border fell to his tanks in quick succession. Bruel's fall in under two hours was typical of villages in the Empire's path, and the road to the capital bore a steady flow of refugees. So yeah, more similarities to uh, World War II in Germany. Germany built its uh, armory. Gallia's capital, a town secure and stable since ancient times. Within its walls stood the castle Rand Greece, and within its unicorn spire resided Cordelia, Gallia's princess. Yeah, the similarities between this and World War II continue. Hitler built his army around a mobile corps of armored uh, units. Gallia's policy of neutrality was a system of universal conscription. Under it, all schools required military training each year. In the event of a war, citizens were then drafted into the militia to defend their country. As the conflict with the East grew worse, both Welkin and Alicia found themselves no exceptions to that fate. Time to whip the pump it into two soldiers. Can't do a proper Jill Sergeant voice, or else I would. I would. I mean, I could, but it would blow my mic out. <laughs> so these are my new digs. So a military construct. Conscript gets his own office, complete with room to put pictures of pressed and dried out butterflies. Oh, my uniform! And snazzy uniforms for the militia. Before reporting in, better get ready now. Jesus Christ! Their militia recruits are well off. Imagine if militia had that in colonial times. Jesus, we would have destroyed the British. Binoculars, a compass, and a map. Everything you need for a nice hike. Or combat. <laughs> Remarkable similarities, ahoy. I love you, Welkin. Welkin? Can I come in? No, my pants are still off. Sure, it's open. Oh, you're already changed too. Let's see. She doesn't look that different. Not bad, not bad. You look good, actually. Bounce chicka wow wow. So, how about me? Do I look alright in this? Convincing? You kind of look like a baker that's getting ready to defend her store viciously, like a hydra. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, you look fine. You wear it like a pro. Really? You're not just saying that? Of course not. You look tough. I like it. Well, Ken, you don't understand women, do you? Oh, good. I was worried it looked kind of silly. No way. That plating on the back? It's like a coleoptered exoskeleton. Beetle-tastic. You just get women. Coleo what? And did you just say beetle? <laughs> he just gets women. Uh, Welkin? What kind of girl wants to hear that she looks like a bug? Huh? Not just any bug. A rhinoceros beetle. King of the insects. Who wouldn't want that? Most women, Welkin. Most women. I guess I'll just try to take that as a very Welkin sort of compliment. Get used to it. <laughs> Tell me about that scarf. You've been wearing it since I met you. 
Oh, this? It's part of my uniform from the bakery. Is that right? I don't want to forget the time I spent busting my buns baking. <laughs> I plan to keep wearing it until I can get back to manning the ovens again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm reading Great. something on Twitter. Once you do, I'll be first in line to get some of that bread. Oh, he's getting bread for free. Is that a promise? Well, I'll be sure to have plenty of it ready and waiting for you. Oh God. Absolutely. Hey, if you're ready, we should probably go see the captain now. From what I just saw on Twitter, you should go to uh, Bisharp to Queen Force Twitter and go to his YouTube channel and subscribe to him, because apparently he promised a strip show when he had 100 subs, so go do that and make him embarrass himself, please. It's going to be so awesome. <laughs> Hear that, Brady? We want the strip show and we want it now. All right, let's continue right on to Squad 7. Ha, <laughs> Naruto reference. I'm pretty sure this was made after Naruto and Kakashi's voice actor, so Squad 7. Come in. Excuse me, ma'am. Galleon Militia Enlistee, Welkin Gunther. Reporting for duty. <laughs> He's Come the in. duty. Galleon Militia Enlistee, Alicia Melkiot. Also reporting for duty. I'm Captain Eleanor Varat. Commander of this regiment. Gunther, you're promoted to lieutenant. That was fast. Of squad seven now. Ma'am. Enlistee Melkiot, you're promoted to sergeant. You'll be under the lieutenant's command. Understood? Ma'am. What do you know? It is you. You're breaking you protocol. Welcome. All of you? I had no idea that you'd enlisted. Yep. Now that there's a real war going on, I joined up. Pretty much all the officer and training boys are here just like you. You know each other? Yes, ma'am. We knew each other at university. Welkin was in science and I was in archaeology. And just look at us now. No archaeology or science. <laughs> just like the two of us are studying more, I guess. Looks that way. It's good to see you. And you. That'll be all for now. There's a strategy briefing later today. But you still have time. Time for you to catch up. You'll be spending a lot of time on the post and in Randbreeze. They'll be your new home, so get to know them. That'll be all. Report back in time for the briefing. Until then, you're dismissed. Way to break military protocol, Faldio. Fucking pompous jackass. And welcome to the Randbreeze screen. If you notice, you can go back to book mode. But you can't right now, you have to take a full tour of headquarters, so you gotta go to the squad barracks, the command room, the training field, and R&D. So, uh, yeah, I know what I'm entitling this episode right away. Let's go to the, uh, uh, squad barracks. Try to get that done. Let's do all these in order, why not? Anyway, this is where you can see every one of your units, who they like and who they dislike, which does affect combat. And all that fun stuff. These are your two uh, other lieutenants, uh, Bridget Stark and Largo Potter. And yes, that is the right name for him, Potter. You can see their HP and their AP, which is really quite useful. And if you do this, you can also see their potentials. Standing bare dirt leads to boosting concentration rate using accuracy. So if you place her in dirt, she will have increased accuracy. And if she's near either one of them, out of her friends, her all of her abilities in combat go up. Which is a pretty damn good boost. And as you can tell, she has a desert allergy, meaning she's not good in desert areas. And if any of her shark, uh, shock troopers are around her, that means her abilities get enhanced, generally better aim. And um, this is one of the ones that just has a chance to be affected, which is strong world, meaning she takes less damage from interception fire, which is a very good ability. And then Largo, we got... Um, he gets discomfort in like big cities, unfortunately. And, um, oh, that's a pretty good, I didn't even know he had that. He has an ability that makes him revive after hitting a HP zero, which is quite useful. If you think Lauder, uh, Largo is going to get uh, put out, you can use an order to make his potentials activate more often. And if he's surrounded by, like, if he's got a lot of teammates near him, he gets a boost to his abilities as well. And, uh, you can tell he also gets Nature Lover and Calm Heart, uh, Welkin's not going to be used on field combat that much, so you don't really need to worry about his potentials too much. 
But you will at one point. Let's go to the command room now. Get some cutscenes going in here. Do do do. It's good to see you doing the rounds. Welcome. She may sound strict, but she's kind of like Professor McGonagall in that respect from Harry Potter. I know, nerd time, nerdgasm. But yeah, she's strict, but you'll love her for it. This is the command room. Use it to structure your squad. You will have access to both drafted and volunteer recruits. Now that I think of it, Squad 7 is still short on soldiers, isn't it? I'll explain how this works. This is the master list. The recruits have all been assigned classes based on their talents. I should probably touch on the five classes, just so we're clear. I'm not sure if she actually talks during this, but if she doesn't, I'm just going to go through them quickly. First off, you have the scouts. Just like the name suggests, they'll be your eyes. Scouts OP! Their best asset is their mobility. They can go out, collect intel, then make it back safely. Scout master race. And a keen eye for enemies. A good scout can spot a man in tall grass from a hundred yards. Again, scouts OP master race. Comes at the price of firepower. Their job is spotting enemies, not taking them out. Clearly, you've never upgraded your scouts all the way. Next up, the shock trooper. They're the ones to break through enemy lines and clean up. Not as OP. They offer excellent offense and defense. As far as combat goes, they're as good as it gets. A few of them, that's true. The other ones, not quite so much. While they lack any specialized techniques, they also don't have any obvious shortcomings. Yes, I have one. They have far too little AP. Think of them as the least finicky unit in your squad, Lieutenant. Yeah, they have the least. They have less AP than they really should have. Them, we have lancers, then anti-tank units. They're critical when facing armored targets. That's true. Unfortunately, you have to either swap out. You have to swap out one of their weapons to make them anti-personnel lancers, which their sucks. This is pretty self-explanatory. In most cases, they're the only way to stop a tank. You're going to want at least one or two Lancers on the field with you at all times. They're also well shielded from explosives, which conveniently includes tank mortars. Very convenient. Sadly, they're slow and weak to gunfire. Their limited ammo could also be called a drawback. They only have three Lances to start with, and they only regenerate one per round, which kind of sucks. Changing gears, we have the Engineers. Ha, <laughs> rhymes. Handle supplies and perform combat support. These guys are quite useful. Think of them as scouts with less range and ability, but with more heals and ability to repair tanks and remove mines. Other units Treat the wounded, even repair tanks on site. This is why a good engineer, you should always have at least one with you. They can place sandbags for cover, disarm mines, repair towers, you name it. Again, these guys are kind of awesome. Their actual combat skills are very low. Think of them as combat facilitators. Yeah, you generally don't want to fire with these guys, but you can if you need to. Lastly, we have the snipers. They can shoot down targets from a considerable distance. These guys, once they get upgraded, are really good. Until they get upgraded, they are really bad. You won't find better soldiers for marksmanship and range. They can hit targets I can barely see. Sniping rifles also come with scopes that work to augment a sniper's natural eyesight. Drawbacks include low mobility and defense. If the enemy gets them alone, they're done for. Basically what you want with snipers is very long lines of sight, at least one person near them in case the enemy gets close, and elevate a position, and you win. That should cover the basics. Go ahead and put a squad together now. There's room for 20... And you can swap units at any time. Alright, let's see who we got. Now, the, the ones we have right now are Alicia, Rosie, and Largo, who we cannot get rid of. Which is awesome by me. Hermes, Wavy, Montley, Noyce. Uh, Alicia doesn't like Noyce. Uh, Nancy, Ramona. Ramona's pretty good. Susie's okay. Juno's decent. Uh, Cherry gets very, very good. She likes Rosie, Ted, and Ramona. She doesn't dislike anyone, which is pretty cool. Kevin Abbott. Sillinger is awesome. I love that guy. Mika's okay. Ah, Vice is amazing. Wendy's okay. Edie is pretty good. I don't like her voice, but she's good. Uh, Jean is also pretty good. Uh, Dorothy's okay. Nina. Oh, Jan Walker is awesome. Niels Darden is a very good Lancer. The Old Boar is also pretty good. Walter Nash, a very good Lancer. Uh, Rosina Selden, I've never used her. Yeesh, no. Hilbert Nielsen, he's a decent NG. Homer Perrin, eh. 
Dallas White is probably your best NG, and she likes Alicia, and Alicia is in every battle. And I generally bring ED and Ika, so she becomes very broken. Uh, Nadine is also a pretty good NG. Uh, Claudio is okay. Oscar Bell, uh, ah, Marina, this is my lady right here, this is the one I want to marry, this is, this is my lady right here, sorry to any other ladies, but this is the lady right here, I love this woman, and I will marry her so hard, alright, so now that we've gone over all the recruits, uh, we definitely want Ramona, my name's Ramona Litton, good to be on board, Welkin, alright, so since you have room for 20, you're going to want at least five uh, scouts and at least five uh, shock troopers. So, uh, Juno, she likes Walken, so that's perfect. Juno Corrin, reporting for duty. Looks like I'll be joining you in Squad 7. And Cherry Steinen, she's... Ugh. I'm Cherry Steinen, like with a J. It's silent, but um, I'm not. Yeah, she's a stereotypical teenager that wants to blow everyone. But she's great in combat, so I forgive her. One, two, three, four... As a matter of fact, I don't think there's a good male scout. I think Hermes is okay, but he's got he's got claustrophobic, which sucks. Um, Nancy, Jean, uh, Montley's not bad actually. Wait, how does Alicia? No oh, she likes noise. Bad back, country bred camaraderie, metal bred, acmophobic, definitely not. So might as well go. With I'm Nochi Wordsworth. <laughs> hey, that's Gara. That's Gara's voice actor. I love it. All right, so we got our five scouts. So it's one, two, three, four, five. All right, time to go with uh, Hayne Sillinger. Hayne Sillinger, reporting for duty, sir. Everything will die around him. The name's Vice Engelbart. Let's go kick this war in the teeth. I have no idea what game this guy's from, but I know he's a cameo appearance. But he is awesome. And this will be four, I think. I'm Edie Nelson. Perhaps you've heard of me. I'm sure we'll get along swimmingly. Delusions of grandeur about her singing aside, she's incredible. So, what's that? Uh, one, two, three, four. Yep, I can fit one more. Jane Turner. The name's Jane Turner. I'll do anything if it means putting holes in imps. Yeah, she wants to kill things. I love it. Next, we've got Largo, and, uh, yeah, this guy loves Largo. Hey, soldier! I'm Jan Walker. I'll fight with everything I've got. Oh, I know you'll fight with everything you've got, handsome. That's the only time I'll ever do my effeminate voice for you guys. If you want to hear it again, I'll do it for, like, 250 subs or something. Oh, God. Get Walter Nash on here. The name's Walter Nash, buddy. Pleasure to be working with you. You better not die. You've got the uh, voice actor from Mike Guy, so you better live. And, uh, Theold, I think. Hey, Theold Boar here. Remember the name, boss man. Yeah, you asked me to remember your name again, I'll kill you. I'm Niels. Niels Darden. I'll see you on the field. Yep, he wants things to die as well. I love it. Alright, so what's that? So we got one, two, three, four, five. Yep, okay, so we got five, five, and five, which means we have three more. Uh, five, five, and five? No, we've got five more. So I'm going to go with uh, both snipers. We got Marina Wolfstein. This is my baby. Marina Wolfstein, at your command. Yeah, you're my baby. And Oscar. Hey, I'm Oscar Baylor. Thanks for taking me on board. Unfortunately for you, Oscar, you may need to die. So, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So, we can fit three more, and one of those is going to be Dallas White. My name is Dallas Wyatt. I'm excited Wyatt. to be joining up. I'm butchering these pronunciations, but I don't care. I can't remember if Homer is also one of the ones that needs to die, but I can't remember. And Nadine. Hello, sir. My name is Nadine. I'm sure I'll be coming to you for help. And, uh, we have got one more open slot, which I just realized is right in the middle of my screen. Fantastic. You can also view their potential info by pressing triangle. So, uh, what else? Uh, Rosina, Wendy, Mika, Kevin, Susan, Nancy, Motley, Wavy. Uh, Nate Dean likes Wavy, so I might as well. Neat Freak, uh, Decrease in Accuracy, about Dirt. So he doesn't like being near Dirt, 
But if he's near the camp, he becomes much better. And if he's in a, around anyone that's a dark sin, he becomes a better in combat. Combat. Please call me Wavy. From today onward, we fight together. He doesn't even look like a dark sin, honestly. He just looks like someone with purple hair. And now that that's over with. Well, feel like you've struck a balance. Come back anytime you'd like to adjust your squad. As time passes, we'll have more recruits to choose from. So keep an eye on that list. Oh, and all the recruits go through training together, so they're all ready for combat. That's incredibly helpful, by the way. They'll be at the same level as the rest of the team you've taken into the field. Incredibly useful. You can swap out members without the worry of losing the benefit of their experience. Yeah, this is incredibly useful in case one of your recruits is dead. Trust in your own judgment and pick a team you know you can work well with. That should be enough to get you started. You can figure out the rest as you go. All right, I'm at 20 minutes, 21 minutes now. Wow. Squad leader's a lot of responsibility. Yes, it is. Come to think of it, Baldio's heading up Squad One, isn't he? Yes, he is. I wonder if he's off sorting through this stuff now too. I'd better get a move on. All right, I'm gonna keep going through the rest of this Rangri's business to get it all done. It's gonna be a longer episode. We're going to go to the training field now, where we will get the lowdown on potentials and commands. Welcome to your worst nightmare. I'm the guy who's gonna whip you lazy blobs into shape. That's not a very good drill sergeant voice. I'm the guy who's gonna whip you lazy blobs into shape. That hurts. I'm not doing it again. And I hope I didn't blow out your eardrums. <laughs> Still, I can't work miracles here. No amount of drilling beats real combat experience. That's the number in the top right of the screen, by the way. I want you all to go out there, kick some imp tail, and then show me what you learned. I will train that experience into something you can actually use. Level you bums up. Well, that's, that's, you know, fourth wall. But, don't go trying to hog all the glory. A squad's a team and we got no need for stars. You will train as a class and level up by class. Scout level two, scout level three, you get it? When the scouts level up, that means each and every one of them goes up that level. You hear me, maggots? Any of you think he's better than the rest of the team? Go home now! All right. Now I'll show you lowlights how this whole thing actually works. I love this. He's a drill instructor, putting you down at every turn. It ain't complicated. First you go out there and fight. Then divvy up that experience here. Once the experience you cram into a soldier class clears a set amount, it'll level up. Picking which class to level up and when is your job as the squad leader. Now give it a go. Alright. Now this is where you can assign. I've got all day. Now this is where you can assign all the experience. You can sell, we can get up to level 2 scout, level 2 shock trooper, level 2 lancer, level 2 NG, and level 2 sniper. So let's go ahead and do that now. Get everyone up to level two. You're better than this. Push those limits. Push those limits, maggots. Ow. Never again. All of them leveled up. Good work, maggots. You're one level closer to human. Looks like that session beat a new potential out of the Lancers. That's a new battle potential. Looks like that session beat a new potential out of the sniper. That's awesome. At certain levels, your uh, troops will get uh, new potentials added to them, which they can only get by going through this. You can also get new orders by doing this, which I think, if you get to the next level with your scouts, will happen. I, got no use for tears. Sweat, sweat, sweat. I will be skipping these once we've seen all of them, but they are pretty funny the first time you see them. Level up! Good work, maggots! Aww. Oh. Anyway, you can see these are their potentials now. The bees are battle potentials which you get from leveling up since we will see from the snipers. Where are uh, the... Where are they? Uh, the lancers, right? There we are. First aid boost. He gets a boost to the use of Ragnade. He gets a boost to tanks. He gets a boost to first aid. He gets anti-armor boost. And he also gets anti-armor boost, which is pretty cool. And I set a new potential out of the snipers, right? Nest Master. Shooting from the letter... Uh, uh, top of the ladder grants even more power, which is perfect for a sniper. Same thing for her. Alright, let's see. We got 
enough to get the Angies up a level, so we might as well, and then just put the rest into the scouts. You want to get the scouts up to the point where they have grenade launchers, because not only do they get grenades, they also get the underbower grenade launcher, so they technically get two grenades per round. And when your scouts are high level, it makes... Uh, when their scouts are a higher level, it makes uh, doing the uh, skirmishes a lot easier, so you can get more experience from them. And defense boost, which you get from engineer level 3. If you use this order, it takes command points and boosts the defense of one unit, so they take less damage. Pretty useful. Got it? That's how training by class works. Now get out there and rack up some experience. Oh, and there's one more thing to add. Sometimes leveling up a unit class will unlock a hidden potential in them. Which I just explained. You can think of potentials as the natural abilities your soldiers have inside them. Those abilities will form a big part of your strength in the field. So keep them in mind. Other times, leveling up a class will earn you clearance for a new order. Which we just saw and I explained. Here. As long as we're talking about it, I'll teach you a classic. A real golden oldie. And we get the evasion boost, which increases your evasion at the end of a turn. It also slightly boosts your ability to evade interception fire, which is awesome. Orders are special commands you can give out as the squad leader. They can save your tail. Or, you know, help as you're grinding experience and money. It doesn't take a genius to see that leveling up your soldiers is the best way to beef up your squad. The soldiers will get stronger, and you just might unlock new potentials and orders. All that just from me working you sorry bums into the dirt. Thank you, Drill Sergeant Master Sir. Maggots are ready for a real workout the next time I see you here. I love this guy. I know I am at 27 minutes now, but I did say I'd get through all of this stuff, so we're going to the R&D facility to meet Pike, quite possibly my favorite NPC in any game of all time. Let's do this. Welcome to R&D, man. What can I do you for? Leon, bro! Huh? Wait, I know that insignia. You're Lieutenant Gunther, aren't you? Guilty! I knew it! Man, I've heard about you. That evacuation at Brule was just... Wow! Easy, man. Protecting a tiny life in the middle of all that slaughter? Man, man! All right, now calm your tits. There's a little bit too much. Calm your tits right there. And then some, bro. You get all my respect and then some, Leon, bro. I love you, man. What's going on, Leon? I could hear you from clear across the hangar. Oh, come on, Chris. Oh, Casey, check it out. It's Lieutenant Gunther. He's the man, man. He's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about him, Lieutenant. He's like this all the time, I'm afraid. Oh, don't apologize for him. But where are my manners? I'm Chris Cherney. I'm training here as a mechanic. Yeah, Chris, just let him be. Oh, oh, and I'm Leon Schmidt, but just call me Leon, bro. I'm your boy. Sure thing, Leon, bro. So, Lieutenant Gunther, what brings you down to R&D today? We do work here on weapons development, making upgraded weapons and equipment. And that includes rifles and machine guns. We can even soup up your tank. I love that. Of course, research expenses aren't cheap. No, they are not. With rifles and other firearms, we'll mass produce new models as they're developed. You won't have to worry about making enough for your squad. We'll outfit them. Which I love. For tanks, you can upgrade the baseline performance of the body itself, or develop optional parts that you can add on to tweak out its specs. Which is also very awesome. Right. You can choose which optional parts you want in the tank equipment section. Come in any time and make adjustments based on the needs of the operation at hand. Outfitting tanks. Developmental work on tank happens in the form of body enhancements, tread and weak point improvements, and attack support. Body enhancements mostly reinforce the gun barrel and body armor to improve its base stats. Tanks will automatically be given the best body type you have developed. You can decide whether to favor its attack or defense, and altering body types gives your tank a different outward appearance. Improvements to the treads and weak point and attack support take the form of parts that can be added to the tanks to enhance their abilities. Each part has a set size and blocks. You decide how to fill the 4x3 block storage capacity on the Edelweiss. Pick the optional parts that best fit your own personal combat style. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and do all this. We're going to outfit our tank, 
You can see, um, you can change the parts here. We have the 82mm anti-tank, which has an E-rating aim, which kind of sucks. And we want to change that a eh, pretty much as soon as possible. Now, as you can see, we actually don't have anything purchased for the tank yet, so we can't do that. We can, however, go into the develop section and develop shit for it. Go into attack support. You can get a site upgrade to increase the uh, accuracy. It takes one block, costs a thousand. Treads. You can buy a spare tread to increase your tread HP, or get a hardened plate to increase your critical defense. Critical defense is kind of important. And of course, body enhancements to increase your range, which is amazing, and increase your uh, frontal armor, which is also pretty amazing. And you can also use R1 to cycle through them. And then over here, we got the uh, rifles, the galleon. You can get uh, the uh, accuracy boost one, which increases the damage versus people for 500. It doesn't actually increase its aim or its range, unfortunately. Now we got machine guns. The firepower boost just increases it by one, but remember these things fire off 10 shots per, so that's actually an increase of 10. Next, the lance. We have a firepower boost, which barely increases its uh, ability for its people, but goes up by 50 for armor. You're going to want to upgrade these guys quickly. Sniper rifles. The accuracy boost. It doesn't increase their range at all for right now, but it will eventually increase their aim and does additional damage. You're going to want to upgrade these things whenever you can. Then you got the hand grenades, which we can't upgrade yet. Uniforms, which give you a base of one defense, which means if you take two defense from a sh uh, two damage from a shot, you'll actually only take one, which is pretty awesome. And then blast suits, which is for the um, lancers, which in uh, enhance their abilities versus uh, explosives. So we're going to get an accuracy boost of one. Develop this, and boom! You, bro. It's done. Awesome. Now, we still have some money, so we're going to get the firepower boost for the Mags M2. And you don't actually get new weapons. Go, All done. Basically, when you finish, as you can see, there are now branching paths after the next two upgrades. These uh, make it so that your weapon can be different. I think you can only select one of each individual path. But one increases its aim, one increases its damage, and I think one increases range. Let's go over to the rifles and see that over here. And probably the same thing for the anti-tank lances. You can go one of two ways, anti-personnel or anti-armor. We're going to go anti-armor because we need all the anti-armor we can get. Since tanks are pretty OP. And then sniper rifles, uh, you're going to want the one that gives you better aim because the range is already pretty good. So let's go with the accuracy boost for now. And then you got hand grenades we can't upgrade yet. Let's go ahead and get that first uniform upgrade. Kaboom. All set for you, bro. It's done. And then, um, yeah, this is just a straight upgrade path, and I'm pretty sure... Also a straight upgrade path. I wish the armor, they would have gone, like, different upgrade paths. Like the Lancer armor, I wish they would have done it so you can increase their resistance to bullets and stuff. And uh, that's everything we can do for these guys. So, in the Edelweiss, let's go ahead and go for attack supports. Side upgrade to increase that accuracy, because we desperately need that. And uh, Bulletproof Visor. Put it right there. And uh, spare tread uh, radiator or... I'm going to go for the range upgrade, which in, which helps a lot. Yeah, these are body enhancements. You don't need to place these on the block, which is awesome. And we are out of money. So we're going to exit this place now. Oh, sorry. We're working here around the clock to make possible tomorrow what's out of reach today. That sounds like a marketing phrase. Come again a little later. We'll do our best to have something useful for you by then. Yeah, as you complete missions, they get more and more stuff, which you need more and more money for, but it's really, really important. Yeah, you better come back soon, bro. I am all fired up to work on stuff for you. And I'm fired up for you to work on stuff for me too, bro. I love you, Leon. I love Leon, bro. Wow, I'm at 34 minutes. Holy shit. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the end of uh, what we can do in Rangris for now. We can do more stuff later after cutscenes and stuff. And we can now go to the Headquarters tab. About Headquarters, on the Galleons Militia's base you can use experience points and funds you've acquired in battle to train your troops to higher levels and develop new weaponry. Stopping by before combat or after an op once you've acquired more resources is a good idea. Triangle to pick from Headquarters, tab select menu. As you progress through the game, new destinations around the base will become available to you as well. And uh, yeah, tab select, you can select that or that. So. 
after 35 fucking minutes in this episode, I think I'm going to call it quits. In the next episode, we are going to continue on to our first op, Vassal Urban Warfare. And then after that, we will probably unlock our skirmishes, and I'll do the first skirmish after that, which will not be an actual part of the episode. The skirmishes I will upload as their own separate individual parts on the same day, hopefully. So, uh, without further ado, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video, guys. Let's try to get it to... Let's try to push the boundaries here. Let's go for 10 likes here. I've been hitting 5 consistently on a lot of my videos. Some of them not quite so much. So um, try, let's try to stretch the boundaries here. Let's go for 10. And make sure to leave me a comment, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the longer video. Um, hurt my voice a little bit, but I think it was worth it to get all of this stuff out of the way, not in the next episode. And uh, tune in for more, because as you can see, it looks like there's something with a bridge coming up next. And um, yeah. And one more time, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, take care.